Hi, I'm Sharon Bridgeforth. Welcome to this week's That Black Mermaid Man Lady Oracle Reading. This week, my spirit and heart is full um, with a lot of emotions and, and thoughts and memories and um, prayers uh, for Lori Carlos, my mentor and big sister, um, teacher, who has stage four colon cancer. She is in Minneapolis where our loving artistic family, her blood family, um, folks are walking with her, caring for her, and being with her through this time of tremendous change. Um, so there are some links below if you want to tune in and see um, where Lori is in the journey. They're going to be up doing updates there. And also if you are able and would like to donate, there's a link there for that below. And, you know, I'm thinking about Lori and just really I'm just overwhelmed with gratitude. Um, she took me in. She chose me. She chose to take me in as an artist. Um, in 1998. She chose to take in a lot of people. <laughs> She's got a lot of art babies, <clears throat> as she calls them, all over the world. <laughs> I don't know how she did it. Bunches of us um, that she walked with, um, collaborated with, uh, helped to grow up. And uh, she's made a tremendous impact in my life. And even before I met her, her work in for colored girls who consider suicide when the rainbow is enough. She was the original woman in blue on Broadway. She got a Obie or a Bessie, I forget. She's gotten an Obie and a Bessie. I forgot which one she got for that show, but she received uh, many accolades for that work. And that work is, has impacted the field, you know, since. Um, before that, her and um, Jessica Hag Hagedorn and Robbie McCulley with their thought music and so many other contributions that they made literally broke ground. And I feel that I'm standing in that ground and I'm here because of their work and sisterhood, because they, because Lori saw me and um, helped me to grow up. And it was actually Lori that said to me one day I was complaining back in the 90s about what I didn't have and didn't know and who wasn't blah, blah, blah. I was complaining. And Lori just looked at me and she said, you need to help somebody. And then she walked away. <laughs> and I thought about that for quite a while. And I thought about her impact in my life and work. And that was when I chose to really <clears throat> focus on mentoring and to really develop a intentional process and way of walking with artists that were uh, newer in the journey than me. So I owe so much to her, I can't even begin that conversation here, but I've included some links below that you might find interesting, probably stuff you already know about, but just in case. And I do want to say this one thing, the first time I saw Lori perform. I may, I don't know, I forgot to ask her, I'm going to have to ask, if she was in the touring version of For Colored Girls, but I saw that in San Francisco probably around, I mean, somewhere in the late 70s, and she may, I don't know, her and Robbie may have been in that, I, I have to ask. But anyway, that work, and then reading that book, shifted my cells and I feel rooted me in my soul's mission and in my um, memory of what it is I came here to do. And then it was a very long journey, but to later, about 20 years later, find myself sitting next to her um, is evidence that um, prayers are answered and when we are brave, um, even when we're afraid or confused, doors open, roads unfold, and what we need is with us. And to me, that we are each other's wealth. 
but anyway, in the 90s, early, early 90s, I saw Urban Bush women perform Praise House. And Lori was in that and was instrumental in getting that on its feet. And Grisha Coleman was in it and so many, you know, uh, it was just such an amazing group of black women performers who were uh, sh soul shifting and um, using breath and gesture and dance and text and um, I feel ancient knowing to bring work to life on stage and I remember sitting there women in their work brought that piece to Austin Texas where I was living at the time and I remember sitting there and just thinking that I could dream and it was then I that I decided to not only move forward with this dream I had of starting a um, touring company but to name it the Root Women Theater Company. <laughs> Cause I was like, Urban Bush Women, Root Women. <laughs> anyway, um, but what I wanna, before I do the reading, I want to start with a quote from Omi Oshun, Joni L. Jones's book, Theatrical Jazz Performance, Ashe and the Power of the Present Moment. Omi has a whole cha chapter on Lori's work and uh, Lori's chapter is called The Marrow. And in it, Lori gives a recipe for bone marrow soup. And Lori says, anybody would find it overwhelming when you're trying to do self-examination, an examination of your own body and spirit and language and staying true in the moment and creating new moments and not doing <clears throat> easy answers and not repeating old stuff over and over again. But of course, that's the work the artist has to do because it's that's the work. That's the artist's work. That is what your work is. You don't ask yourself to do easy things, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus and if you I, many of you have been in the room with Lori so you know <laughs> all that that is <laughs> uh, okay so with all that in heart and mind I'm gonna pull three cards for this week representing beginning middle and end of week uh, and I'm using the that black mermaid man lady Oracle deck um, the artwork is by Yasmin Hernandez. Uh, it is an ocean deck, so it's all about what's under the surface. It's an ancestor deck, so it's all about love. So let's see what they want to say to us for this coming week. All right. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. So beginning of week is oh, Caney Sharp. And uh, in the world of this piece, um, oh, Caney Sharp represents divine opportunity. It's about being at the crossroads. It's about the power of choice. So the beginning of week, th what they are offering is the opportunity to remember that we have power, we have agency, we have self-determination that gets to be manifested, opened, and expanded through our choices. New Road. Mm. Grief fell around her feet. Her ghost release took the heartache with them. Her stolen innocence returned, anchoring a new song till the light became her and she became herself. So new roads, divine opportunity for choice, a calling for us to be ourselves and release and let it all fall away and be in the right now, even if we don't know what that means. Move forward, choose yourself, choose love. Middle of the week is David, <laughs> which makes so much sense because in the world of this piece, David is about purpose. And you see David's swagger 
David got swagger. <laughs> and David uses that swagger, uses his fine ass rhythms and knowings to invoke change, to offer shifts, to help us move into our purpose most fully. And David say, you already know. So I ain't gonna say no more about that. When the back of the card is blank, it means you already know. So I ain't gonna talk about that, but we know that our purpose is connected to our new roads, which has to do with divine opportunity and us choosing to be ourselves most fully. End of week, it's Sweetie Junior. And Sweetie Junior is always about clearing. And on Sweetie Junior's arms is tattooed, get on up and fly. And in the world of this piece, actually it was old Caney Sharp that told Sweetie Junior that, get on up and fly. So this is, as you can see, a, it's coming full circle for us this week. And it says clearing. When Sweetie Junior finally did come back to us, she wasn't Sweetie Junior no more. She was more like that Black Mermaid man lady everybody been dreaming about. Mm -hmm. So clearly this is a week that is offering uh, new roads, greater opportunities, um, assistance, divine assistance for us to be ourselves, to stand fully in our purpose and to shine. And that speaks to me so much about what Lori Carlos does in any room that she's in. She comes in like Oya, she busts them doors down, she whirls that wind, she pushes you, kind of almost moving through your own body and helps you to be yourself, to make the choices that perhaps you thought you weren't brave enough to make before. She assists you and helps you to make those choices. And then when she's gone, what's left is you more powerfully yourself. So let us be ourselves bravely. Let us serve love divinely. And let us know that we're never alone. All right. Have a great week. Love you.